Let me start by saying that um, financial empowerment is normally associated with people in a younger generation, not those of us here. Because the truth of the matter is that we should have started earlier than now. No matter what you may be told, and I'm not looking their way by FCMB, if we were to match it, your chances are that you probably would never be able to build as much than if you had started earlier. So that what you will face right now is a stark choice that you must accept that you have to, you're starting late and you'll have to adjust certain things around yourself. You have to learn one concept. It's called mind your business. Let me repeat myself. Because it's raining, you know, you, it won't stop you from going out to go in, right? We should stop behaving like elephants and remember all the bad things about this system. This country is having incremental growth. This market is going to incremental development. And if you don't pay attention to that and you keep on remembering the bad things or you allow the negativity to cloud your mind, you will miss the first point, which I said, we're starting a bit late. So today, and I believe the whole essence for people here who are here is not to report on events or to make uh, some big deal out of it or to appear intelligent to all of us, is to understand that these institutions here have recognized the need that they would have to give back to society in terms of empowering people to understand why and how they can build wealth. And so they organize this forum. Well, like in most forums, we always want to always remember what was not right. Okay, so let us talk today about what is right going forward. It is also good that you hold the regulators accountable, but no matter what he says, they can't really be held accountable. There's something in this business, it's called caveat emptor. It's called let the buyers, you open your koro koro eyes, enter. Now, if you don't have the knowledge, therefore, that's why these kind of sessions are important. You know, we don't read, you know. How many of you opened your television set and studied the manual? It's the same thing with the financial industry. None of us bother to read the fine lines anyway, do we? You know, the difference between those who make it and those who do not make it started from how you were raised. How many of you were taught finance at home? How many of you did your parents and hold you to give you investment knowledge? So you come into this game very ill-equipped. Maybe perhaps you, that's one of the reasons why some of my colleagues in the office divide, decided to devote attention to personal finance. Because we recognize that a lot of issues are there that we're not dealing with. We assume everybody knows, right? It's just the same way as we sign on. When you get this tablet and all of you said, do you agree? You know, everybody just clicks agree. Nobody bothers to read. And then you turn around and say, oh, they're, they're infringing upon your rights. But it's there. It's black and white. This is a caveat M2 market. Let us get it straight. 2005, 2006, we asked every one of you to come to the market, just like in a church setting. You all sold our forms in the church, right? But we needed you to get into the market because the market needed you as well. But today, the market still needs you, but it needs a much more discerning you. There are products available here which I would like you to focus your question on. There are things you would like to know, and you should know, and you should ask questions. You see, when Nigeria rebased, a number of people assume it's just a gimmick, right? Like most pessimists, we always assume everything. There's something. There's a scheme somewhere. There's a scam somewhere. But what that rebasing did for you is to show you the potentials of this country and to show you the number of areas that are still on tap and wealth and to show you that at some stage, apprenticeship, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship will match together and there will be opportunities for people to make money. And it also tells us that the whole concept of building wealth tells you that in this country there's still so much more to go around. We can blame government for what we care, but here in finance, we don't blame anybody. We make money. That's what we do. So I want to share with you 
About three months ago, Prochia took a deliberate step to enter the world of personal finance, an area it knew all too well, but had to sidestep to enable to create a platform of engagement like the analyst and, um, and, and web TV and so on to make articles and research more meaningful. So that when you engage with the stakeholders and market operators and the regulators, you have a bridge in what we do. It was a journey I knew too well on a personal level, not just as the CEO of this startup firm, but as one of the many who come from a sealed faith, a background, where the life cycle starts and ends with the letter P, poverty. Not prosperity, not progress, and not profits, but poverty. It's called the cycle of the normal. You grow up from an area because you get a job, you get a flat, and all of a sudden you've made it, you drive a car, and that's the whole idea. Just to please society, start a symbol. How many of you got a new job and packed out of where you were living before and got a better flat? Most of you did. Because you thought that was advancement. It will, it will please you to know that the majority of landlords in Lagos are not graduates. That majority of landlords are not as educated as you. It will also please you to know that the largest people who work and who make that go to okay are not suit wearing people like you. So next time you get that pay rise, think quietly about it. Today, I want to make a pitch, not a speech. It's a very simple thing. Life doesn't answer to those who deserve it, but those who demand it and are disciplined enough to deliver on it. If you're thinking of building or increasing your wealth in order to secure your future, then you may want to pay attention to the meaning of the keywords in what was said here. The keywords are what build, wealth, secure, and future. This will require you to be honest with yourself, something you are not comfortable doing often. Building wealth covers a lot of things, insurance, pensions, targeted investments, education, career, and home. In this endeavor, you would find out that saving money from your regular income may not be enough to grow your wealth. But it's a good starting point. When you get your pay packet, what often goes to people's mind is the expenses you need to meet. Like so many people, we spend all and invest what is left, if any. That is wrong. The first rule is to invest first based on the future plans and then manage what is left. Better still, you look for or actively set out to create other ways of making more money or building a residual income. Here's the hard part. These things are very difficult to do. But yet, as difficult as it may sound, the process to grow wealth requires an, a very disciplined person. So the principle is you use the day to work, the night you use to invest for your tomorrow. So if you burn everything together, you wouldn't understand the principle of money. It may sound a little bit uh, spiritual for you, but these are not issues about witches and wizards. These are facts and figures. There are 12 hours in the day, 12 hours in the night. Because you need to understand that second 12 hours, because you then have to start to understand how to develop secondary income. You have to make, invest the secondary income you therefore make by using those 12 hours in the night, doing extra work to make money. Everybody that works in my company knows, I always tell them. There's only so much we can pay in salaries. There's an optimum. It depends on what you earn, what you get. There's only so much. But you've got to learn for yourself to have a secondary level of income. And then when you have that secondary level of income, you invest it in assets that generate rental income. Real estate, stocks, funds. You also consider a retirement and pension plan for yourself. Because if you don't, there's no public safety net in this country. And we may not have for a long time to come. And we are also losing that community feeling. You know, there's this popular joke uh, my friends used to say. That if you meet someone and he says, my uncle, my auntie, it's probably from a ritual. You know, because poor people don't have uncles. They always run away when they say <laughs> Study, you'll see. When you hear that uncle call, you don't want him to visit you. Because they're always asking for money. But when you see my uncle, you know, Uncle Tony said this, Uncle Tony, they're probably rich. <laughs> Protect your assets by taking up insurance plan. You know, 
Traditionally, we have some very funny myths around us. We don't like insurance, life insurance. Ah, do you want to die? Do you want to die? Well, that's a fool's game, yeah? Insurance is part of the wealth management structure. People don't see it that way. Health insurance, assets insurance, your life insurance, education insurance. So you can insure almost everything except against a bullet. <laughs> that's not covered. And you can insure against uh, the market crashing as well. But also, the last one, invest in you. Invest in you. 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 You're, in this world, the chef life of knowledge has dropped, significantly reduced. And you're only as good. We're in a very, very, very strong knowledge economy right now. And you're only as good as what you know. And by the way, for those of you who think that we have excellent universities in this country, I congratulate you. But if you were to compare your curricula with the curricula going on in the world today, you would weep for yourself. A group of people who met and said, because of the crash, we did not envisage it very well. We're going to adjust the curricula for economics in some of the leading institutions. I'm not sure any of us have developed a case study around what happened in this crash. We haven't even put it together for us to learn. But guess what? People are learning every day and they're becoming better. You've got to invest in you. And if General Bassanjo can go back to school, you can as well. No matter the age, you have to invest in you. See, I run an IT company. You know this smart TV set? I'm talking in the office one day, I raise my hand, and then the motion starts moving. I'm like, what's happening? Before, I would have thought the witches are visiting me. But now, I know that it's called a smart TV for a reason. There's convergence coming. Technology, there's convergence. So also is knowledge. You can make more money if you don't improve yourself. Education, your career, and your life. So this is my short take. I'm not going to work with figures and data with you today. I believe this kind of conversation is more about an exchange of people to understand each other. Am I perfect? No. Have I built the wealth I want for myself? Obviously not. I'm working at it every day, just like every one of you. Do I come to here to teach you? No, I've come to learn myself. And that's the attitude you need to survive in today's market. Not pointing blame, mind your business. I have enough problems of my own to add Nigeria's own to it. This is my short take on how I and you have to take responsibility for the changes we seek, the difference we yearn for, and the future we desire. While the specifics may differ from person to person, the story is all too familiar with most that we have become somewhat indifferent to the tales and challenges. And unless we are giving testimonies on the, on the church on Sunday, such things are hardly things to bear. So here's my advice. Get angry with your status quo. Take immediate action. Change your position. You don't have an excuse.